I've been doing videos for a while, but I've never done one on a ZJ Grand Cherokee manual transmission conversion for the 4 liter. And the reason for that is I've done them, but it was before I started doing videos. So this one has been around a long time. This here is my personal daily driver. I converted it about well, five years ago to a manual transmission. I've been driving it ever since, and uh, it's fantastic. I love the manual transmission in this. Uh, the body is a 96 Grand Cherokee. Uh, a few pieces are different years here and there because it's pieced together from all sorts of wrecked uh, Jeeps. But um, basically, standard outside. Uh, it is a Laredo. Uh, the interior I redid with the limited interior because, you know, it's nicer. So I've got the limited interior in it. Uh, we've got the manual transmission setup with the clutch pedal. Now here I'm using the clutch pedal assembly that I make. It's from stickshiftzj.com is where you can get them. And it has info on them. Um, that is using a switch to trigger the automatic transmission PCM to decide whether or not it's in park or neutral. Normally we get that signal from the automatic transmission. Here it's getting it from the clutch pedal. So when you push the clutch pedal in, the automatic transmission PCM thinks that it's in park or neutral, so it lets you start it up. When you let the clutch pedal out, it thinks that it's in gear, so you can't start it, so it has a safety feature. Also, that allows the cruise control to work. The cruise control won't work if it thinks it's in park. Go figure. Okay, under the hood, it's basically a standard 4-liter Grand Cherokee. Uh, the motor is out of a wrecked 98. Uh, with real low miles and that runs beautiful. Uh, had a cracked manifold as happens a lot uh, so I went with a replacement on that. Uh, one thing to note on those is the flange thickness. A lot of people buy aftermarket headers. The flange is really thin and when the bolts that go on the intake manifold and the exhaust flange have a washer between them, if those two surfaces are different heights it doesn't clamp the same. So I went with a stock style manifold because the only way I could find the flange that was the right thickness to make that washer sit level. Now, uh, as far as the manual transmission stuff goes, we have a foot master cylinder and a reservoir. And that whole system is available. I got one from Rock Auto that was complete uh, from reservoir to slave cylinder, pre bled all the lines, everything was all intact. Uh, I think it was around $100. It was pretty reasonable. And so that's off the shelf. Again, look for a 93 to 94 Grand Cherokee. I'm going to take you on a front to back overview of what's underneath it. Uh, so, you have tow hooks, they're off a of wrecked Jeep, standard factory stuff. Front mount hitch, I admit did that, I did it in a video where you can see how to make one if you want it. I have the skid plate over the tie rods, that's another factory piece off a different wrecked Jeep. Under here, the tires. They look like a real familiar tread, um, but this is actually uh, a tread right tire. They're remolds where they take an old carcass and put new tread on them. Uh, so it's actually a recycled tire made in the USA. Um, but it, it grips perfectly fine and acts like the brand it's copied from. Um, underneath the suspension, I'm running. Uh, those are one and three quarter inch aluminum spacers. Uh, I'm running those without isolators. And uh, I wanted the height to not be too high, so I like the height it's at, but they do clunk a lot. So uh, if you're worried about noise, that's not the one to go with. Uh, also, I do have bump stop extensions, so the travel is just the same as stock, just moved up about one and three quarters of an inch. Now, uh, AX15 transmission. This one's actually out of a ZJ. Um, it's one of the, the ZJ I took apart. I took a lot of the parts um, that were the factory manual transmission ones and installed it in this Jeep. So that is a factory ZJ manual transmission AX15. Uh, it's drilled the same on the back as the XJ. Um, so the regular Cherokee would be the same as this one. The Wrangler have a slightly different drilling pattern on the uh, transfer case mounting. So uh, if you have a Wrangler one, it'll work. You just have to re-drill the mounts to get it to clock the transfer case right. Uh, and they make jigs for that. Just look it up. You'll find it easy. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, the cross member is the early two-bolt style cross member where there's 
two mounting bolts. This one came originally with a four bolt style cross member being a 96, um, but the two bolt one from an earlier model fits right in. And you want to get the two bolt cross member along with, there's a little metal saddle in there that the mount goes into. You want to get that piece too. The mount you can buy off the shelf. Uh, they're still available. Uh, places like, I got this one from Rock Auto. Um, a lot of parts stores have them. Uh, so that all mounts everything there. This you don't need to worry about because that is not important for a manual transmission conversion. Uh, it's actually a little camera. I use that when I go off-roading to uh, look if I'm going to get high centered or do uh, check the front wheel location uh, so in case I don't have a spotter. So uh, you don't need that. Um, skid plate is the factory ZJ skid plate, bolts right on. Then we have the drive shaft. Now the drive shaft is uh, the front one is the standard CV style slip oak, same thing that most of the Jeeps of this era have. Um, since it has a slip yoke, I like to measure the tube part. So from weld to weld, it's 16 and 3 eighths of an inch. So that, if you make that tube the right length, generally all the slip yokes I've seen have all been pretty much the same, so that should get you where you need to be. Um, from the end, the center, to the center of the U-joint caps is 27.8. Um, and if you're having a drive shaft made, just they'll tell you how to measure it, so do it however they want. But that gives you an idea of what you're looking at, drive shaft length on the front. Uh, now in the rear, we'll go check that one out. Um, rear drive shaft length. Now again, this is all the factory ZJ stuff. That came from the factory 36 and 1 8 from the center cap to the center cap on center. Um, so that works perfectly with the basically stock suspension, stock slip yoke, all that stuff. Um, and then if you're going to do a slip yoke delimiter or whatever, you have other issues. So you're going to have to figure out the drive shaft there. Again, if you're having a maid, they tell you how to measure them. Uh, transfer case is a 231. Again, that's the one out of the factory ZJ manual transmission one. Um, but the 231s are pretty common. Um, let's see. Everything else is pretty standard here. All stock ZJ stuff. Got the um, fuel tank skid plate, got another camera for backing up through trails, and uh, that's about it. Now this thing is really nice to drive, it's a good all-arounder. Uh, with a 4 liter engine, it's really smooth, it's torquey, um, it's easy to drive, you don't have to rev it up. Uh, that Liberty, you have to rev it to get it to go anywhere. This thing, off idle, 1000 RPM, no problem. And normally, I shift at like 2,000 RPM. Uh, you really don't need to rev it at all. You can just let it lug, short shift it. Going fast, shift it maybe 3,000, 3,500 RPM, or even sand or something like that. But um, as far as normal driving, 2,000-ish RPM or so, that's a good uh, engine speed. And cruising on the highway, you're in that range too, a little over 2,000. Seven hundred. 
see what the differences are with the manual transmission off-road. Uh, right now I'm in two-wheel drive in real soft sand, so yeah, it digs in. Real speed up, lose all your momentum. Yeah, dug a hole. Alright, so that's why we have this little lever here. Normally I do most of my off-roading in low range just because it gives me more gear options. And then we drive right out. Now this is first gear, um, low range. Now I'm not touching the gas pedal. Uh, as you can see, my foot is not even touching it. Driving through a fairly deep sand wash. Um, and the idle control is taking care of it. Running right about, no, oh, 700 RPM. And it's holding it there. So uh, I'm gonna go out, put another camera on, and then we'll do a little more off-roading. I'm in a deep sand wash. Uh, low range, first gear. Just going to let out the clutch. I'm not touching the gas pedal at all. Just drop the clutch and it goes. Uh, with the low range, you have pretty good gearing. Uh, in high range, um, you could feel how the first gear, you, you got to take off like you intend to with a little bit of gas. You can't just dump the clutch and ignore it uh, like you can in low range. But it's still, it's basically like driving a normal standard transmission vehicle. Alright, there's a pretty decent hill. Alright, we're going to go back to first gear. Just dump the clutch, not touching the gas pedal at all. Just letting the idle air control do it. Low range, first gear. She's just climbing right up. Feel a little wheel slip, but not much. I have not aired down the tires, running street pressure, 28, 29 or so. So yeah, no airing down anything. It just crawls right up, that kind of stuff. the brakes we're just going to coast down it and it didn't go over 800 rpm all the way down the hill it just crawled right down there 
so. Um, all around, I really like the standard transmission in this. It's more fun to drive. Um, it off-roads nicely. Uh, the only problem you run into, really, and, and uh, I'm a big fan of standard, so I'm gonna, but I have to mention this, is in your deep, when you're in deep sand like this, you let off on the clutch, you stop. So we're going to go along, let off the clutch, and dead stop already. Second gear. Roll it a little bit, but you can feel it slow down quite a bit. So you can shift an AX15 pretty fast, but you do have that torque loss when it does when you do the shift, and you can lose your momentum that way. But um, I really don't have a problem with that. Generally, I'm not trying to do sand dune running or anything like that. If I was racing, I'd be doing a different vehicle anyway, and it probably still have a stand. Well, I made it to the tortilla store, so I'm going to go grab myself some fresh tortillas because we're having burritos for dinner. But thanks for coming along for the ride. <laughs>